Hello, everyone. We have a very, very special podcast today. Today, I'm sitting with the CTO and founder of Sologenic and Corium. I'm sitting with Reza. Super excited to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Zen. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, we've been talking about doing this show for a very long time, and uh, it's finally the right time. There's been so much happening. I'm so excited to talk to you more about Sologenic. There's tons of new developments happening on the XRPL. And I'm also so excited to talk to you about Quorium. It's been almost one year since the main net has launched, and there's so much happening. So uh, for the new user, for the new viewer who's watching and learning about these projects for the first time, can you give us a, you know, a brief elevator pitch of what Sologenic is? Yeah, I mean, for those of you who are not familiar with Sologenic, Sologenic is basically an ecosystem that is built on top of the XRP ledger. So Sologenic.org is a set of tools for um, the main functionalities provided by the XRP ledger, those are like DEX, um, NFT marketplace, and every other tool. So it has onboard, like uh, on and off ramps, uh, as well as bridges to other blockchains. And Sologenic.com is basically the tokenization arm of Sologenic that intends to tokenize securities like stocks and ETFs. And uh, so they are two different entities, but all within the same ecosystem. So the idea is for all these tokenized assets to be traded on the Sologenic uh, ORG platform. And um, the tokenization for um, securities right now, they are on a, they are running on testnet. And um, so basically simulation is there. Anybody can try it out and, you know, use it on the, um, the Sologenic.com app. Dot .org apps. Yes, yeah, so you guys actually have uh, the test simulator for on-demand tokenization. And that's one of the first things that got me interested in the Sologenic project. Uh, the fact that you guys could tokenize over 40,000 different stocks. And then like the more I've been following the project, it, I'm actually learning the project's even bigger than that. It's becoming like the one-stop shop for all your needs and yeah. utilities for the XRP ledger, which is pretty cool. So let's uh, get into Quorum real quick. So what is the Quorum project? So Quorum is a layer one blockchain. And um, it's a third la third generation layer one blockchain. And when, say, when we're saying third generation, we mean that you know, Bitcoin is the first generation of blockchains and the second generation is blockchains like Ethereum and the third generation are uh, blockchains like Corium. So Corium is um, focused around enterprise use cases, bringing use cases for um, organizations that want to have a, a public ledger or a public chain for their applications. Um, like currently these organizations, enterprises use private blockchains like Hyperledger Fabric and other ones, but that kind of kills the whole idea behind using a blockchain because the main idea behind using a blockchain is for the decentralization, the transparency, and for it to be public. And Corium tries to fill that gap. And it basically is sort of an app chain on the Cosmos ecosystem where it um, communicates through IBC with the other Cosmos-based blockchains. And sort of every one of these little blockchains kind of fill a role in this whole ecosystem and the whole Cosmos ecosystem. Like you can see you have um, one chain that specifically does stable coins or one chain that specifically focuses around uh, AMMs. Now, Corium focuses around tokenization and wants to be the asset hub of the Cosmos-based ecosystem. And not only the Cosmos-based ecosystem, because Cosmos, like blockchains are, um, you know, they are interoperable with other chains like Ethereum, Avalanche, and others through bridges. And so Corium intends to um, basically become the, the chain of choice for anybody, not only organization enterprises, but for anyone to issue tokens. If they are CBDC tokens, they're stable coin tokens, if they're um, stock tokens or any type of tokens and uh, Corium intends to provide that functionality to um, users. 
You know, you guys had great foresight. Uh, you announced Corim win in 2021. But you yes. guys are doing research and development way before that, right? We have, yeah. I mean, since the very, like, it, Sologenic has been a very long journey for us. So the idea behind tokenization, I think we were one of the pioneers of tokenizing uh, securities. And, and when we came up with the idea, it was just basically um unfamiliar for the the crypto space uh, because at the time everybody was so focused around other applications of defi icos and things like that but sologenic really wanted to kind of be bridge the gap like be the bridge and fill the gap between traditional financial markets and the blockchain and when i say it's been a long journey is well we are all tech people we know how to build things but that bridge requires a very complex side, which is the regulators of any kind, like the regulators of any jurisdiction. And it's pretty difficult to, like what we have realized is pretty difficult to, to innovate that space. So you got to push really hard in order to be able to innovate that space. And so we don't give up. I mean, we've been trying to do that uh, for the past three, four years now. And for, um, the tokenization for the technology itself, um, we had the idea of having an app, like a tokenization specific blockchain in the, in the very early days of Sologenic, but we didn't have the time to basically get to it and, and implement it. So we started doing some research. We did the dig into the information of how is it going to be um, how how a, a token specific chain is it needs to be designed, and we learned a lot of lessons, you know, by interacting with the regulators. What are the requirements these regulators need in such tokens? And so from those lessons, we kind of built the blueprint and prototype of Corium, which was launched um, March last year. So another reason you had a great, that's another topic I wanted to talk about. Uh, you guys had the foresight also to see this whole RWA real world asset narrative way before. So like now you hear Larry Fink talking about it. Now you hear like all these new chains are trying to do RWAs. And you guys were doing it way back. Like you guys were, like you said, you verified it. One of the first to talk about that, pursue that. And then also, so in 2021, IBC was very, very new. Like it was just barely launching at that time. And obviously you guys study the technology to believe it in enough. But now do you see all the, there's been like over billions and billions, I think like $21 billion bridged through IBC, not one exploit, knock on wood. Also, uh, you got USDC issuing stable coins on it. There's over a hundred connected chains now. So you guys also had the foresight to kind of see this whole cosmos boom uh, before a lot of people. And when you guys announced Corium, it was one of the inspirations for me to start looking into Cosmosm, IBC, Cosmos, and it's been blowing up. So you guys are definitely in the right ecosystem too with Corium. Um, do you have anything you want to? I hundred percent agree with you. Not because Corium is you know, built on top of the, the Cosmos SDK. But when we were researching how to like kind of create this blockchain, should we bootstrap and use an, you know, an SDK like Cosmos SDK or build everything from the ground up, we realized that um, like the, the, the group of Cosmos SDK, Tendermint, IBC, they, are, they work really well together. And we, at that point in time, we saw a big future for any Cosmos-based app because, you know, the, the, um, the interaction between these components and not only these components with, within a blockchain, but other blockchains as a whole, it's going to be massive. Um, not only that, the, the, the whole stack for Cosmos. I mean, we like throughout the, the journey, we we've had like a lot of challenges with Cosmos SDK that, you know, there are certain limitations, but those aside, I, I think that the, the whole Cosmos um, set of tools, Tendermint, IBC, SDK, Cosmosm, or even the EVM based chains, 
they will be the future of the blockchains. And, and the reason for that is because there is no longer the, the competition for TPS and I do this and that and that. Now, the focus is around building the logic on top of a blockchain. It, the, the whole stack provides you a perfect uh, consensus layer. So you don't really have to focus, build everything from scratch. I mean, it's been tested by hundreds of blockchains right now. I mean, there are test nets, main nets that are running and everybody's kind of testing. So many different teams are working on it. So that alone um, provides a kind of, kind of assurance that the, the stack is good. Like to the, I think a few hours ago, Solana was halted again. Yep. Um, and I mean, it, I'm not saying it doesn't happen on the Cosmos blockchains. It happens probably on every chain, but it's been battle tested. Everybody's been testing, you know, Cosmos based uh, chains. And when you, when you have the resources to focus on their logic, or let's say the app of the, um, the chain, then you can do a lot more because then you, you don't have to spend those resources on making the consensus. You know, in our roadmap, we do have consensus improvements of Oreo, which currently uses standard mint. So that requires us to fork at some point from these chains, from these tools. Um, and we are actually doing some research. All right, we're in the R&D phase of how we can improve the, the things, the challenges that we had faced. Wow. And, um, you know, matter of fact, this R&D started exactly at the launch date of Corio in back in March. And we had a meeting with the, with the developer team that exact same night that we had the, the core Nova event. And wow. we decided to investigate how we can improve the consensus layer and basically increase the number of transactions per second. And there are so many different, um, you know, scenarios either through side chains um, that would interact with the main chain through ZK rollups or, um, you know, in expanding the, the chain itself and increasing the number of TPS within the main chain. And so we're currently investigating and we actually have um, theoretical uh, like blueprints on how it needs to be done. But we're putting all the focus and resources on making what needs to be done in the, you know, as the first version of a full version of Corium. And then so we can focus around improving those things because TPS and um, speed and throughput is very important, but it only becomes important at some point when you reach those limits, right? So when, when, when you haven't reached those limits, then there's no point for you to even be looking at that because, um, you know, you, the, the initial focus should be around increasing the number of transactions for the chain itself. We're doing that, like we're trying to bring a lot of different projects. We have the grants program. We have a lot of different initiatives to to increase that. But um, yeah, I mean, to that was a long answer to your question. But I think the Cosmos ecosystem is amazing, and and we would definitely um, are happy that we were on board the Cosmos. Um, wow, galaxy. you just blew my mind. So you guys are really gonna push the limits of uh, Corium. It seems like you guys are expecting a lot of activity to happen on chain then to be pursuing. Uh... Oh yes, wow. absolutely. Because when when the, there is actually use case for the products that we release, then maybe that's not happening tomorrow, like literal tomorrow, but maybe next year, next two years, next 10 years, next, I don't know, in the future, it, it will happen that the, the the transactions on Corium will increase. And, you know, while we have the mechanism to incentivize higher transactions by providing discounts, so we kind of push uh, organizations or anybody who uses Corium to batch the transactions to get a discount. Um, even though that's there, we're still looking at ways to increase um, the, 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 the limits of the chain um, as if Corium is going to be the main killer blockchain in the world. Wow. Wow. Well, that's uh, incredible news that, you know, as soon as Corium launched, you're already figuring out ways to make it even better. And that's what I like about you guys. You guys are always working, always building 
uh, everyone that you surround yourself with too. Uh, yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to bring up uh, the fact also that I've been seeing IBC expanding beyond Cosmos. You know, like now we see Ethereum. There's a test net for IBC on Ethereum, and it's uh, getting pretty wild. But let's uh, let's go back and start a little bit with uh, Sologenic and the XRPL. Uh, there's a lot more I want to talk to you about Corium project. Um, I'll have the I have some questions for you about Sologenic, if that's okay. And then we can go into the future with Corium and kind of how they connect. We only have so much time with you today. Um, so uh, Sologenic now is on the XRPL, the original project. Uh, that's the roots of everything that you guys are doing. Uh, what is the Sologenic team specifically uh, working towards at the moment? So the Sologenic team currently is working on the new ATG and ATG is short for asset tokenization gateway. And so all the resources are spent on creating this new um, non-custodial solution for the next generation of asset tokenizations within Sologenic. And I mean, at the same time, the team is also focused around building um, things like the AMM uh, XLS30. I mean, it's already built, but we, we kind of take all these new amendments. We built it in advance. And then once they're closer to launch, we put a lot of more time testing and making sure they're working fine. Um, but the main focus and, and the kind of a longer um, vision uh, for, for Sologenic is to um, to release the ATG uh, platform that, that would uh, tokenize assets in a very interesting fashion that I will talk to you, you know, for a little bit about how it, it will work. Do you want to go into the ATG now or should we save that? Up to you. Yeah, you, you, you enticed me. Let's talk about the ATG. So the Asset Tokenization Gateway. What is, I think that Bob also had a post recently. Is this connected yeah. to what Bob was saying? Bob said, Bob mentioned a post on Twitter saying Solo, the token, will play a pivotal role in the Sologenic tokenization gateway, serving as the gas fee for any redemption and issuance process. Yeah. Each transaction is going to be burning more Solo, a dynamic approach to maintaining value and utility. And you guys are already burning solo like crazy. I would look the other day and there was 1 million solo burn on the tracker and we don't even have this type of utility live yet. Um, um, should we talk about this, the, how it yeah. all connects to the asset tokenization gateway? Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm excited to talk about that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, to, um, to touch on the burn of the solo, yeah, I mean, it's just coming through the NFT marketplace. And token issuance, obviously. Um, but I think once the real use case is there, the tokenization of RWAs is live, then we're going to be seeing a lot more solo tokens be burned. And um, that is sort of the, 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 the main utility that solo token was intended for. So hopefully we're getting closer to those stages. Um, to be able to see that solo is is actually being used in in those and solo is also going to be used for liquidity um and um i'll talk about a little bit about the atg um the, the asset tokenization gateway and so you can understand how basically it's done so the sologenic v1 was an asset tokenization purely on the XRP ledger, which is great, but you don't have DeFi capabilities. You will only be able to buy and sell, you know, tokenize, trade, redeem. So if you want to extend the capability of that, we integrated Corium with the existing Sologenic ecosystem. So that these tokenized assets are not only on the XRPL, but they are actually utilizing the smart token technology. And um, basically these tokens are interoperable between both the XRP ledger and Corio blockchain. 
through the bridge. So the bridge is, is, is a very strategic product uh, between the two projects that it will kind of uh, merge the two projects together so that you will have Corium, the closest blockchain to the XRP ledger, because it just makes sense. Sologenic is the big, biggest ecosystem on the XRP ledger. And if Sologenic integrates Corium well within its you know, um, platform, then you would have those you know, missing DeFi capabilities uh, coming from Corium to the XRP ledger. Right. So that bridge is going to fill that gap where you can um, transfer tokens from one chain, any tokens, to the other chain in both directions. So um, say you have issued a token on the XRP ledger, you will send it you know, matter of seconds to Corium. And also, not only Corium, you can actually send it to any IBC base chain. So say you have Solo or you have um, OXP, any other token in your wallet that you want to send to any IBC base chain, it's just a matter of few clicks. I'm not sure if you've seen like how CCTP money or how those, um, you know, kind of bridges work, but it's just, uh, you know, fill the address um, and send. Very easy, very interesting user interface actually. Um, so not only that, but from any IBC base chain to send tokens to the XRP ledger. So you can see tokens like stable coins like USDC by Noble, USDT by Kava, Osmo, any other token that exists within the IBC ecosystem can flow to the XRP ledger and be traded on the decentralized really? X. Really? That's yes. gonna that could happen? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I'll how we're going to get USDC on XRP ledger, huh? Yes. And I tell you wow. where we're with that now. Um, we are in the process of getting Sorry. those things audited. And the audit has already been started. And I think, you know, it should take a couple of weeks before we have the audit results. And I think maybe another week or two before we release the whole bridge. And so the bridge is actually going to be operated by Sologenic. So well. uh, anybody wants to bridge anything to Corio goes to Sologenic and they do the bridging of any asset. So it's basically a portal between the XRP ledger and Quorium that any asset can, you know, fly through this portal, go to the other chain on the other side, and okay. it's fully decentralized. Can I mention something about the bridge? Because the when the bridge first launched, it was pretty stressful. Like you would do it, and sometimes it would take twenty four hours to show up, and everyone was kind of like sweating during that process. Yesterday I did the bridge. I was actually doing a live workshop with some of my coaching clients. I was doing the bridge in real time with them. Instantly the quorum showed up on the other side. Instantly. I was so shocked. So you guys have like made this bridge incredibly fast. Uh so there's been a lot of improvements through uh it through has, yeah. The the, with the the bridge itself had the a few um different versions. And now I think we're at version um two point something for the bridge, which um, is instantaneous for anybody who's bridging. It basically just, you just send tokens, but it's a very simple bridge compared to what's coming. Uh, this bridge is super simple. Basically you burn tokens in the originating chain, which is the XRP ledger. And so we detect that on Corio and issue the tokens um, in the destination account on Corio. But this new bridge not only works with core token, like Corium token, but any token both ways. And um, it basically works when I when we say it's decentralized, it basically is um, governed by a network of relayers. And so these relayers are validating these transactions between the two chains because that's the the XRP ledger doesn't have the smart contract capability as of, the, as of now. So there needs to be a, a group of relayers to oversee those transactions and to kind of, you know, validate if they're happening or not. Okay. Like a validator set, but let's call them relayers, just like how IBC relayers work. 
but they observe these transactions on the XRPO and uh, work with Corio. And, and that's how you make that's how the bridge is decentralized and not like multi chain or right. Yeah. And these relayers are actually incentivized by fees. So it's a descent, like anybody can become a relayer. And they are getting incentivized by receiving a share of fees um, by bridging. So right. it's it, it's all whole um, sort of, you know, ecosystem of incentivization and slashing and, and so forth. Um, and it basically puts Corium where it wants to be. Corium wants to be the token that the chain to issue tokens and assets. And all these tokens are smart tokens. So you are unlocking DeFi capabilities for any token that exists currently with the XRP ledger. And not only that, but for assets like tokenized stocks and securities or RWAs in general. Um, and when I say DeFi capabilities, I mean you can you can you can lend your um tokenized stocks and, and earn yields. You can- that's what I was gonna ask you about, that's what I was gonna ask you about, because Bob had a post back in the day saying that uh, Corium was built to expand, uh, you know, solo and XRP, and you can't do lending and borrowing right now with the XRP ledger. But if we were to bridge to Pulsera, you know, it's possible that we could do those type of DeFi stuff with yeah, those tokens, I mean, right? You could provide the AMM liquidity, right? Um, That's supposed to be coming, right? Yeah. Didn't Bob make a post saying he wanted XRP and Solo on Pulsera with uh, liquidity pools that we could yeah. use? I mean, not only these tokens, but I mean the RWA tokens. So, so like the Tesla stock. Yes. So, you, so let me you add, could... so, so, so Quorum is this layer one network and then Sologenic plans to be one of the killer products of Quorum because that's one of the things So there's so much competition in Cosmos right now. And the way that I see you guys angling yourself as uh, different and going to be special is Sologenic winning and being the killer product on a uh, Quorum. Do you agree with that? Um, I think so, but I want to p- position it this way. Sologenic is not migrating from the XRP ledger to Quorum to become a Quorum killer app. Right. So Sologenic- the multi-chain interchain dApp. Is that how yes, you say? but with more focus towards the XRP ledger. So Sologenic will utilize Corium's technology to enhance the XRP ledger. So will the tokens or source be XRPL, then they could bridge to Corium, get all the smart token stuff? Yeah, absolutely. So yes. Kind of like how you did XCore? Kind of like how you did XCore? How you issued it on the XRP ledger and then it's going to... or dip. Yeah. I mean, not only that, like XCore is an option token that will convert to core at some point you know um soon um but any token like solo or any other token let's say meme token on the xrp ledger if sent to corium through the bridge will automatically be issued as a smart token and so you can do a lot of things with these smart tokens and we're actually just you know we're building more functionalities for these smart tokens the extensions are coming sometime soon. So right now, we talked about what Corium, what Sologenic team is focused on. Now, the Corium team is focused around uh, two things. Well, the main focus was the bridge, which is done. Now the team's kind of shifting focus to towards two main um, features. One is the the next version of assets, the smart assets. So these assets will become programmable. Like right now, you can have smart contracts with these assets, but then there will be a closer relationship between smart contracts and smart tokens. Call them token extensions. And the in parallel, we're also working on the decentralized exchange. So this DEX is an order book style DEX that don't require... Um, liquidity providers to provide liquidity on both sides. So it's basically just a, an open market for any asset that's issued, regardless if it's coming from the XRPL or IBC or directly issued on Corio, you know, these assets can change hands and be traded. And um, so in that sense, I think we're competing directly with 
the likes of DYDX and uh, say chain on the Cosmos um, world. And because uh, um, probably too. Yes. And um, there's only yeah. a couple, there's only a couple of most dexes in Cosmos. You could only swap. You can't do the limit orders, uh, order book, traditional order book style. Yeah, no, you can't. And you have, um, like, uh, aggregators, um, FTM. Yes. I think you, where it basically builds or TFM, FTM it basically builds an order book on top of the existing AMMs, which uh, is not an actual order book, but sources that the liquidity from these AMMs um, has a lot of, I mean, it, it is advantageous for a fully AMM based uh, ecosystem, but it has a lot of disadvantages for uh, traders. So that's, that's going to be the focus for the DEX. And I think it's one of the main components because you have all these assets issued. Well, there needs to be a, a centralized marketplace within a decentralized ecosystem, obviously. Where you can, right. you know, trade them, and um, similar how to the XRPL Dex works, there will be a Dex on this side as well. You know, something else that we need to talk about is uh, you have the ISO two zero zero two two simulator. So, why did you feel the need to add that feature into uh, the the technology? I think the main reason behind ISO 222 implementation is um, competition. So at some point, there were a lot of buzz about chains that are you know, compatible with the ISO 222. And we, we kind of felt that if we start pitching Corium to an enterprise and ask them to issue tokens, then there's obviously this question of what standards does your chain you know, support? Is ISO 222, which there's a mandate for all financial institutions to switch to, and it has been applied, I think, last May. Um, do you have it? Do you have the ISO 222? And if you don't have it, then there is there are these other chains who might have it, so we're going to have to look at them. So we want to be giving a, a product like a a full solution to enterprises. So where they can, if they have like stable coins, CBDCs, uh, transaction settlements, anything to be able to do it directly on the Corium chain. And that's how we did, like we, we started with the idea and we, 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 at the time we had a chat with our advisors and they said, yes, we think this is a great idea. And I think like they, they said, we think that it will be a great product uh, within Corio. And yeah, I mean, we talked about it a lot. Um, I know then... certain people, I know certain investors that only invest in ISO coins for some reason. So it is pretty uh, popular. All right. But um, but then it's... also uh, you have the fact, oh, go ahead. I think you guys are the only position Cosmos chain with this feature right now, right? I think so. And I think we're one of the only chains that actually have the, you know, the capability and the, the other chains are um, like, yes, you could do ISO, but you need modifications on the chain. Like it's not there already. You can't find anything in the documentation of like some of the chains that, um, you know, they claim they have the ISO 22. There's like no, not even a mention of it. So we don't know which chains actually have the ISO capabilities. But at the same time, it's important for an enterprise, when we position ourselves an, as an enterprise blockchain, then we must have these set of standards. Otherwise, there is no like not a big differentiation between a non-enterprise and enterprise blockchain, an EG, EBG, EGB, and non-EGB. You mentioned a few moments ago about your advisors. Um, besides that, um, you guys have a great team and have been watching, you know, things progressing, things happening, you know, new partnerships. But one of the things that really struck me, one of the things that I think uh, got a lot of people excited in the community was at Ripple Swell, at Ripple's biggest event, Brad Garlinghouse, 
basically acknowledge you guys and said you guys are building some very interesting things and cool things on the XRP ledger. Um, did that like give you guys a boost of morale? Did that, you know, was that like a cool moment for you guys or do you just not even care? Did you just keep building more, like, just get back in the building? No, I mean, um, I was at the event, Swell event. And I, oh, you were and there? Bob, yeah, I was there. I mean, no, well, wait, I was at the event generally. Like I was, you know, we had a lot of meetings with different people with, um, you know, different parties, different companies. Um, and so Bob was also with me. And uh, the, the closing day, we had a meeting. So we actually had to leave the, the event er a bit early. And so when I was in that meeting, I started getting texts and messages from some of the people like we know where the events. Oh, hey, you just, you know, Brad just gave you a shout out. Wow. And like, That's cool. <laughs> but we're like, ah, I, we missed it. Does anybody have a video of it? And we, we got the video. And we're like, yeah, that's super cool. I think um, Ripple is a key player in the XRPL ecosystem, obviously, as everybody knows. And they're one of the main drivers and of where the direction of the XRP ledger is going towards. And at the same time, um, I think our like relationship with Ripple has, has always been close, but it, it's always that we have discussions around every different, like, every, like all sorts of topics with that Ripple. They have been interested initially in cross-border payments, and that was one of their focuses. Now, I think that is kind of shifting and changing towards RWAs and tokenization, um, where I think the XRP ledger is also a great tool for, for that. And I've always been saying that the XRP ledger is one of the best chains for tokenization, just like direct tokenization. If you don't need like DeFi or if you don't need, uh, you know, exotic things to with, with, the to with the tokens, then the XRP ledger is amazing. And um ripple is doing a great job i they've just not just but everybody knows that they have acquired medical to provide um enterprise custody solutions which is important for you know tokenization and we're really glad because we're going to be also included in that umbrella so if medical is compatible with the xrp ledger and provides those institutionalized you know custody solutions then we are also becoming compatible for those um clients and uh you guys have yeah. the fire blocks relationship too that's pretty big because yeah. they're working with like central banks yes um our like frankly our one of our um best partnerships is the bitco partnership with Gore. that i want to talk to you about that too because we have fire blocks on the sologenic side and then you have bitco on the quarium side and bitco is the second largest uh custodian partner right yes and so they're um, fully on board with corium and they're helping you know in what ways they they have they're actually helping validating the corium blockchain um are they are they validator now yes i don't i don't remember that the validator name but it's been run by bitco one of the validators oh, wow. there is is bitco's validator and with that's a huge deal because when you see talking about validation on Corium, um, I'm I'm really happy to see how you know it worked out for the community validators and the enterprise validators. Like you see um entities such as Bitco participating in the validation and your validator, like the Zen validators, I think it, you, it's the biggest it's the, the largest validator now, right? Yeah, surprisingly, I'm shocked, but we became number one oh, validator. It's crazy. Yeah. So like how they coexist and validate the, the chain. So you see the interest from the community and the enterprise world, both making sure that the network remains secure. And not only that. And decentralized. Yes. And not only that the gain was the, the securing of the Corium chain from BitGo, but gives you access to custody. And when you're talking about enterprises, Nobody writes their, um, you know, wallet secrets and hides it under pillows or put it in their safe. You know, enterprises need to have a solution, like an actual good solution with different layers of approvals and different layers of protection 
to be able to store anything like any assets within the within the organization and bitco provides just that and um, without that i think it would have been very difficult to convince let's say a bank to um, start tokenizing and doing transactions with Corey because otherwise they're like okay so this is great but in terms of custody we don't have a big provider and bitco i think is one of the biggest and it just does an amazing job and not only that use case comes but a lot of exchanges actually work with bitco and i know for the fact that many exchanges many like even tier one exchanges only list tokens that are um you know given by fireblocks and bitco wow um because they do not like to integrate the um, you know, the interaction between the chain and the exchange directly. So they want to trust a custody provider and basically a, a technology custodian that would handle the transactions for that chain and wow. many of them. And, and so it opens doors for uh, those exchanges to be interested in, 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 in listing Corey. Wow. Wow. I had no idea there are validators. There's some big validators on chain. Um, now you probably can't answer this question, but you know even Hulvai hasn't listed Corium yet, and they're a validator. There's a lot of you know interesting validators on the chain. Um, what else did I want to talk to you about? Uh, one important thing: everyone's really amped up for uh, Valentine's Day, so um, the XLS thirty is coming to the Sologenic decks. Anything that we should prepare for? Uh, is there any like so? Obviously, we're going to go to Sologenic.org. We're going to launch the DEX. We'll connect our wallet. Will it be available with Ledger, all the wallets, or do we need to have a Sologenic DEX wallet to get ready for the AMMs that are coming? I think you just need the Sologenic uh, DEX wallet. And if I believe if you go to the test um, network on Sologenic ORG now, you can, might, you can try the AMM right now. So really? I think it's there um so what I, wall, so it will only be compatible with the sologenic dex wallet or will it be compatible with other wallets too like, it would be compatible with every other wallet okay. as long as like you see that with these wallets you just ju you're just signing transactions so as long as you can sign these specific transactions then it's compatible so two questions about the state of the XRPL, and then we can go deeper into Quorum for the last 10 minutes. Uh, there is two amendments passing and they seem to be helpful uh, for what you guys are doing, but we have the clawback feature coming, I think in like three days, two days. Then we have the AMMs coming. Uh, do these help you guys with your goals? And uh, do you expect uh, things like XLS30 to bring more traffic to the XRPL? Because I talked to a lot of people. They only hold their coins on like centralized exchanges. And uh, you won't be able to benefit from AMMs on the centralized exchanges. You'll have to go to the XRPL. So do you think that we'll see an influx of a bunch of new users coming too? So it's kind of a long question. Yeah, no, let me answer the clawback feature first. I think that's that's definitely a must feature for any RWA solution. So if, if you are working with any regulated entity, they want to see those features on the chain. Otherwise, it's, it's a no-go for them because you, know, you, you, you have to be able to seize assets. You have to be able to have um, you know, cer certain um, capabilities when you're issuing assets um, and you're highly regulated. So that's, that's a great feature. And I think the main reason that feature exists is because of RWAs. And I think initially when it was released, a lot of uh, community members had concerns like, hey, is it going to you know, be an issue with the rest of the tokens and so forth? But um, yeah, that definitely is not the case. I mean, there could be use cases where um, people could be you know, scammed or whatever, but uh, I don't believe that's going to be the case um, because everyone's kind of like using... Um, trusted systems like Sologenic and uh, you kind of get the idea of what projects are like I, I I look at the new tokens that are listed on Sologenic and I'm like oh okay so the community is really contributing to uh, how they find these projects and they're like doing the the trust score and all that stuff the AMM and I think the, the AMM is great but 
the I, I think what even makes it great, like better and greater is the bridge of the Corio. Because you have the AMM, but you already have all these assets being traded anyways. So you need an, a new avenue to bring more liquidity to the chain. And opening that bridge will bring that liquidity to the XRP ledger. And once you have that liquidity, then you can um, use the AMM at its uh, best. So you know, this, this, this has been a mind blowing conversation because when you guys announced the two way bridge, I was only considering the possibility of, okay, cool. XRP could go to Cosmos to be IBC enabled. Cool. Solo could go to Cosmos to be IBC enabled. I never, never, never thought about osmosis or noble native USDC coming to the XRP that way. So you're yes. right. So would there be able to be an Osmo solo liquidity pair on the Sologenic Dex? Is that what you're saying? 100%. Yes. What, so and <laughs> oh my God, I'm ready for this. Frankly, I am personally more excited about things coming to the XRP ledger um, because you have a bigger world uh, of assets, combination of assets outside of the XRP ledger. And you have a great technology with the XRP ledger. The DEX is amazing. And Solgen is providing you know, the, the tools um, you know, through a really nice um, UI. And so once you have those assets available, you have the AMM, you have the order book DEX that works with the AMM, which is a great feature, um, then it just makes sense. I mean, obviously, you see how fast the XRP ledger DEX is. So I would personally ditch any other DEX and trade on trade, you know, whatever assets that exist on the X. Like right now, you don't have those assets. You don't have, I think USDC was attempted to be bridged by all bridge, which is a central bridge. It's a centralized bridge. And, and I don't think it was successful because, you know, obviously people have um, trust issues and so on. So if you have a fully decentralized bridge and these assets can um, exist in a decentralized manner on the XRP ledger, then I don't see any reason for um, the DEX not picking up because I think that's one of the, mo the, like the, the major issue with the XRP ledger right now, that there isn't as much as, li like, as much liquidity as is required for its full potential to be you know, uh, realized. And Sologenic is that. Sologenic provides is that gateway to to use these tools. Um, every like it positions itself uh, as a market, like as a as a you know kind of a um, a leader in the XRPL market for um, a lot of different tools. And you have the bridge, you have the AMM, you have the order book. Yeah. So boosting. I'll, I'll also, Perfect. what you're saying is, like you say, that would be your favorite DEX. I would say a lot of institutions would find it important to have a good, healthy market on the XRPL because what we were experiencing now, seeing Solana halt, uh, because a lot of people talk bad about the XRPL because there's no smart contracts, but people also forget that smart contracts add risk of that event happening, uh, halt on your chain. And it's also happened on Osmosis, not as severe, but... There's been halts on osmosis when it goes down for like an hour. So the XRPL will be a good neutral osmosis home brand. The halts on osmosis are intentional. Those are the times where rewards are split, like are distributed. So they they get they halt every hour, every once every 24 hours or one hour. So that's actually built into their design. But there's been a few times where it's been a uh, like a smart contract issue. Yes, like it happens. But on what I so XRPL has this ten-year proven track record of running twenty-four-seven. Been very few issues with it. It would be a great hub for a lot of liquidity. Uh, people know that it's always going to be available online. I think that's one of the the main mottos of David Schwartz when he focuses as the XRPL to what it is. So if you if you give it what it does best and leave the rest of the DeFi contract things to other chains, then, I mean, obviously that's the, the direction the XRP Ledger is going. They are going to release the, um, 
the the bridge the aim the the bridging capability with EVM chains and that's coming soon on the XRP ledger. But um, so that even opens doors with more chains, even non Cosmos based chains. And you guys um, will adopt that. So you guys will open the EVM bridge with Sologenic? Or are you guys going to? Oh yeah. I mean, Sologenic, we don't have a stance that you know. Yes, we are. Like it, we won't really treat Corium as, um, you know, something that because Sologenic and Corium are very much intertwined as a better thing. But if there is a good use case with these other bridges, then obviously what, what Sologenic cares is the users. So, and if the users need something, then we'll obviously implement it. But um, yeah, and I think it's really good that the XRP Ledger is focusing around what it does best and the uh, DeFi contract things are kind of coming and being extended, pulled from Corium and other blockchains in the future, which is great. We only have a few minutes left and I still have so many questions. So we're probably gonna have to schedule another time in the future, but uh, is there anything about Corium that I haven't asked about uh, that the community should be aware of? Anything you guys got cooking in the kitchen for us? <laughs> the pies the pies cooking. Right? oh the pie <laughs> the yeah the, the pie that's that's for solo right <laughs> yes and um yeah i mean i i didn't go too deep into how the atg works and that how um we're trying to tackle some like we, we i think we're one of the main pioneers of this non-custodial bridge with um these financial markets I'll just briefly touch on that. I think we have a couple more minutes. And basically, with solo with with uh, with the tokenization on Sologenic, you see how the bridge works with the XRP Ledger and Corium. That you have a bunch of relayers attesting these transactions on each chain and kind of are co-signing new transactions on on the the counter chain. The same thing applies for the tokenization. So now you have a bunch of relayers that are all attached to the broker and they're also attached to the chain. So they hold a part of the, the multi like MPC keys uh, to sign transactions on the chain as soon as they observe uh, a transaction on the, the traditional market. So the, the broker basically connects to all these relayers at the same time. And if a transaction, if an asset is tokenized, then they issue that asset on, on the chain. So there is no central party issuing these assets. It's the, the combination of the federation of these relayers that are issuing these assets. Um, and nobody basically holds any central party, uh, any central control on, on this ecosystem. So that's what I'm super excited about. So then the brokers with need to have solo for the gas for all this activity? Um, so no, actually, those who are tokenizing and redeeming token, uh, any of these tokenized assets, they do require um, solo. So uh, the relayers are attesting transactions. So what the main thing that it solves is you instantly get a decentralized proof of uh, assets um, and balances. Without it's like any proof of reserves type of situation. Proof of reserves and like, yeah, you know what's kind of uh, tokenized on the chain in one hand and you know what's um, there in the broker at, on the other hand. So those relayers are constantly confirming those um, situations and, and the, 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 the so it's rules. Not like the, a, it's not like a trust me, bro situation. It's There's not like one person saying, trust me, I got the assets reserved. Yeah. It's a situation but, that's yeah. all on chain yeah. through... Attestations by accounting firms every few months or every month or even every day. It just happens in real time. And will this feature utilize Corium network as well? Yes, it so it's does. It's going to use it... Corium and then it's going to yes. use Solo as the gas token to. So earn. essentially, these tokens are produced on Corium, but then are used on the XRP ledger through the bridge. So how the, fast the, would this process go? Like, would it take a few minutes? I don't know. It depends on the user. If they want to get their tokens delivered to their Sologenic, which we think is going to be the main hub for trading, right? 
then I don't think it's going to be super slow that the bridge is just one transaction. So the, the ones, as soon as the asset is issued on the Corium chain, then it's sent through the bridge and the bridge is instantaneous, as I mentioned. So maybe a couple of seconds or, you know, at max a minute for those attestations to be, um, you know, done and uh, they, the, the, the relayers come to the consensus that this this act, like asset is actually um, purchased on the, the broker side. It will be a few seconds, but then you will you will get the assets delivered on your uh, Solgenic account if you wish to. And you started off this conversation saying that you want to position Quorum and Cosmos as the hub for tokenization. And you basically just shared an example of how that could look. And then trade like basically minted on Corium bridge a sologenic to benefit from the trading there yeah i think the main markets will be on sologenic i mean in the future we don't know i mean you we are also making that dex you could use those tokens on Corium directly you can provide you know them as a liquidity to the to pulsara for example um or you know in the future once the dex is there you could just trade it directly on Corium, but you have the option to, to choose between. But Sologenic is doing this. Sologenic is based on the XRP ledger. Sologenic adopts the XRP ledger DEX. So it makes more sense that these assets are directly traded on the XRP ledger DEX. So they basically flow from the, um, the traditional issuer or the broker uh, to Corium to the XRP ledger. And it creates this dynamic ecosystem where all these different assets are basically benefiting because the better Sologenic does, the better XRP does, the better Sologenic does, the more activities happening on Corium. It's like this trifecta of what you guys have built. So this was a true pleasure having you on. I could probably talk with you for another couple of hours. Uh, I love uh, having you on and talking about uh, Sologenic and Corium. You're invited back to come anytime. Uh, any last words for uh, the community? Uh, I did talk to uh, Reza before the podcast, and he did uh, basically clarify that the airdrop is still coming for uh, the solo holders at the right time. Uh, so that was really reassuring. Um, but yeah, man, thank you for coming on. Uh, anything else you want to say? Oh, well, thank you so much. Likewise, it's a pleasure to um, to always see you. And uh, yeah, keep up the the good work. And uh, I really love the content that you're producing. Yeah, well, I think this video is going to be a hit. So uh, I'm actually excited to rewatch this, and uh, I'm sure I'll hear some new things from what you mentioned. But uh, yeah, everything looks. Very exciting. And until next time, peace, Thank everybody. You.